Hello, Algebra 1 students. This is our video on solving quadratic equations. So what do baby parabolas drink? Quadratic formula. It's super punny and kind of dumb, but I do love the surprised eel meme. He always looks like he's telling you a funny joke. Okay, so let's jump right in. Let's start with a quick review. A quadratic equation, remember, is one that can be written in the form, this is the standard form to be specific, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So we're not a function, it's an equation. So if it was a function, this zero would be a y. Remember that a can't be zero, then there would be no x squared in our equation, and we can't have that. And this is, again, this is our standard form of a quadratic equation. The first way we're gonna learn how to solve quadratic equations is by graphing. So one way is to, is to graph the related quadratic function by pretending the zero is a y. Oh, that's what we are just talking about. You graph it on the coordinate plane. The solutions of the equation are the x-intercepts of that function because that's the place on the graph where y would equal zero. So if I was solving x squared minus four, this equation, x squared minus four equals zero, I would graph x squared minus four and see that the two places where y equals zero are two and negative two. And I would express my solution set with curly braces in numerical order from least to greatest. So to make sure we understand what we're talking about here, the solutions, the values that make the equation x squared minus four equals zero, the values that make that x true are x equals two and negative two. Well, that should make sense because if I put a negative two in here and square it, and subtract four, I do get zero. And if I put a two in there and square it and subtract four, I still get zero. So I've checked it and made sure, and that's your first way. So if you have a graphing calculator and you can graph it and see those integral roots or solutions, you can use your calculator to solve a quadratic equation. So a couple of examples, take a second and think about what these graphs would look like. And what I'm just gonna do is reveal them. They're hiding underneath a, um, uh, an image on the screen. So we have x squared minus one equals zero, x squared equals zero, and x squared plus one equals zero. So let's take a look at what the graph looks like for, the, for each one of these. All right, so our first parabola has a vertex at zero, negative one, and has x-intercepts negative one and positive one. And that is our solution set. So in this case, x equals negative one and positive one. On the next one, you will notice or you should notice that it only seems to touch the x-axis once. This is what we call a double root. When the graph of the function touches that x-axis one time, while you only count that answer once, in many cases you can consider it what's called double root. And we'll look at that when we look at um, other types of solving. So in that case, the only x-intercept is zero. All right, on the last one, You'll look at the graph and uh, womp womp, it doesn't cover, it doesn't cross the x-axis. So this particular equation does not have a solution. So you can write no solution, or you should be familiar with the empty set, which is the curly braces with nothing in it, okay? Or the circle with a line through it, which is called the null set, N-U-L-L. -L. So if you can see it on the graph, you can use a graph to solve a quadratic equation. Now, you can also solve quadratic equations by finding square roots, but this has a very important caveat, caveat, C-A-V-E-A-T, look it up. So here's the detail that we have to have. The equation, if, you can, if you're gonna solve it by finding square roots, it cannot have a linear term. These are equations with no linear terms. Oh no, I have to know what that means, don't I? Well, the linear term is the x term. So you notice this equation, three x squared, minus 75 equals zero. There's no x term. The linear term is the x term. So when there's no linear term, you can take the equation, first of all, write the original, isolate the x squared, just like we solved for x's before. So in this case, what did they do to go down to this line? They divided by, that's right, they divided by three. Then you take the square root of both sides, but this, this is new. This little symbol has a name. This little symbol right here is called plus or minus. So you actually say all three words, plus or minus. So the answer to x squared equals 25, the solutions to that, there are two. There's positive five and there's negative five. So the rule is that when you take the square root of both sides of this, which they took the square root of both sides to get x by itself, and then to balance it out on the other side, we take the square root of 25, you have to put a plus or minus in front of it. 
Now let's make sure we understand why they're both there. Well, if I go in and I check it from the beginning, I have three times positive five squared minus 75, which is three times 25, which is 75, which does equal zero, or three times quantity negative five squared, so three times 25, again, still 75 minus 75 equals zero. So both of those do indeed work. And so you would put your little curly braces around, now then it kind of just looks like squiggly parentheses, but you get, the, you get the, um, the gist of it. So you put your curly braces around your two solutions. Okay, now you try a couple. So go ahead and start off with the first one. I'm gonna pause it and write out some work. So here come your answers. You pause it and do them yourself first. And here we have our answers. So the first one we have, add 36 to each side, and you have negative six and positive six for your solutions after you take the square root of both sides. Remember the plus or minus for the two answers. On the next one, I subtracted 15, divided by three, and got x squared equals negative five. Well, I can't do that. So this one doesn't have a real solution. So there's no real solution to B. When you learn algebra two, you'll learn about the solution to that, but not in algebra one. And on this last one, this one might have been the trickiest because we get so confused with the number zero. So 16 minus 16 is zero. Then I divide it by four, which doesn't do anything. And then when you take the square root of zero, you just get zero. So this would be another one with um, what we call a double root, but it's the same number twice, but we just write it once. All right, the third method and final method in this video of solving quadratic equations brings us to a new property. The zero product property states that for any real numbers a and b, if a times b is equal to zero, then a equals zero or b equals zero, and really you could add the words or both, or both. So the, what we can do with that, now first of all, just think about the concept. That has to only make sense. If the product of these two values is zero, then one of them has to be zero. It could be zero times seven, or it could be three, negative three times zero. Either way, you have to have a zero to get a product of zero. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, if I have a factored expression in an equation like this, I know that this factor, remember the x plus three is the factor and the x plus two is a factor, each one can be set equal to zero and you solve it to find your solutions. So let's do this one down here. So take each of these individual sets of parentheses and make yourself two mini equations. So we're saying that the factors product is zero, that each factor can equal zero. So then you solve your mini equations. And all of a sudden we're gonna think, oh, this is hard because we're not used to solving one step or two step equations anymore. You're used to doing much more complicated stuff at this point. All right, and there we got it. One fourth for one answer. And we're gonna add two to each side here and t equals two, so two is the other answer. So the values that make this equation true are one fourth and two. Let's try a couple more. All right, so one way to think about these problems is always gonna be, you know, as always, since we've had that forever with multiple choice, I could plug in these answers and work backwards. But I want you to remember we've done several activities that tried to kind of get us to the point of learning this. If I factor this, I have factors of 15 that add up to eight, that's positive three and positive five. I know this is X and this is X. So from here, what can I logically do? When I have one X here plus three and one X plus five, I can logically just take this number and flip its sign around. And we did this when we were looking at graphing the quadratic equations. So one of these solutions would be negative five and the other one would be negative three. Because again, we'd set them equal to zero individually. So negative five and negative three is A. And with that, my friends, I'm going to pause it and ask you to do A, B, and C on the page, and I will do them as well. So pause it, please. Here come your answers. Okay, so we had to do some factoring, and I told you guys factoring wouldn't go away. Factoring keeps coming back. So hopefully you're getting comfortable or you're more comfortable than you were with the factoring in general. Okay, so we have the first one here, factors of negative 14 add up to negative five or negative seven and positive two. Make your mini equations and solve. So your solutions were negative two and positive seven. On this one, we have factors of negative 20 that add up to positive one was P plus five, P minus four. Write your mini equations, solve, 
and you've got negative 5 and positive 4. This one was a little bit more to factor. Remember to work on that. Come in and see me if you need extra help with factoring. We had a minus 6 and 2a minus 3, which I did double check and make sure that it's correct. Make your mini equations. Now note on this one, you have to make sure you do two steps to get to your answer instead of only one. Our final slide is a summary of all the vocabulary that goes along with this. And yes, I want you to know this. So please write down these three sentences. They are important. They are important. Okay, please write them down. The factors of a quadratic equation, excuse me, try that again, Ms. Lecomte. The factors of a quadratic expression are the binomials you get when you factor the expression. If you set those factors equal to zero and you get the roots or solutions of the related quadratic equation. So if I take that expression and put it equal to zero, those factors equal to zero and you get the roots or the solutions. So that might be a new word, roots and solutions, they'll be used interchangeably. And then here, those solutions are the zeros or the x-intercepts of the related quadratic function. And again, these will be used interchangeably. Thanks, guys. I will see you in class.